Back at it again for Wolf's Reign, episode trace. Alley Finale Studios! You know those anime that, like, kind of feel like a comfort when you watch them? Even if they're kind of tragic? This is how I feel when I watch Wolf's Reign. It's kind of like a weird... It's like coming back to see an old friend, you know? Get myself a seat cushion because I'm too short. <laughs> Okay, even in the first couple of seconds, the camera angles and the dynamic posing is really strong. The, the artistic director really knew what they were doing with this, with the show. But why, why, why is Toboy screaming? It seems like it, her scream affects all of them. I'm just introducing more lore right away. Sure has the same powers as Dumbledore. He can like make all the lights blink out. <laughs> just get a little. Sumi, you can deny all you want. Can you remember well, you need at least one skeptic in the group, so. That's gonna be interesting to see how he works around with the others who kind of have variations and how much they believe in paradise. Literally, this scene, I mean, just even with the hat and the jacket and the lighting, uh, they take a lot of inspiration from noir films, it looks like. It's piano music. Oh. I forgot it was from this because I'd wake up sometimes in the middle of the night and like hear it in my head and be like, oh, that's from something and I couldn't remember what. Now, I found out, same with like the, the ending theme sometimes for Avatar The Last Airbender, I'll hear that and I don't know why it feels so nostalgic to me. <laughs> that just isn't possible. These claw marks and the fact that you're here should be proof enough for anyone. From the great spirit was born the wolf and man became its messenger. In other words, the human race was created from wolves. Werewolves? Instead of looking for wolves, you ought to start suspecting humans. Ooh, I like that line. You can't trust people. I don't know why, but the minute I first saw the nobles place, I'm getting a vibe of like the Mosque of the Red Death by like Edgar Allan Poe, where they're all shoring up in their fancy places trying to avoid the plague, but it's going to come to them regardless. We don't want a repeat of last time. No more dead birds, please. <laughs> I don't think girls like dead birds as a present. I mean, unless you're a taxidermist, which then, yeah, that would be appreciated. <laughs> so why did you save me, then? If you really don't care, then you should have just left me or... I mean, I'm not your friend or anything. He did save him. You're not my friend. He's so stubborn. Yeah, I forgot. You're only friends with humans. It's easier that way, isn't it? Because no human is ever going to be as strong as you. Oh. So do whatever you tell them to. You don't know what you're talking about. You have no idea what it takes to survive in this city. How dangerous it is. Nothing. You have to adapt to survive, right? Let's see how well you do it. Does she remember what happened to her, or is she just feigning ignorance? Hmm. Oh, so she did forget. But then she remembered now. She was probably in shock. Yeah, you're right. It's all nonsense. Our anniversary's coming up. But we were married in the summer. And besides, we're... I meant the one for our divorce. Oh, gotty. I know this is kind of random to say, but I like that they don't um, try to force humor in this show. They know exactly what they are and what they're doing. Did he just T-pose to assert dominance on that guy? He just whooped straight down. It makes me wonder how often Sumi's had to skip towns just to keep his identity a secret. How much all of them have had to do that. So there's a theme of betrayal going on in this episode. Oh. She's gonna need therapy for years. Allegory for a lot of things in this scene. I can guarantee there's a lot of fan fiction about that. Possibly. Everyone's gonna die. It's a natural part of life. But if life has no purpose, you're dead already. They have killer lines in this one. If life has no purpose, you're dead already. Jeez. <laughs> Gosh, they're mirroring the scene from the first episode. Oh, 
I love a good callback. They're gonna freeze. <laughs> this is Sparta. <laughs> They're gonna freeze. They're he's so guys in like leather. <laughs> They're all wearing flimsy clothes and they're going in the snow. So make a dramatic exit! You don't understand, Toboy. He's the only one that kind of, I guess, has some ties to the city, so... A little hesitation there. Now we have the merry band all together! Okay, so episode three of Wolf's Reign. What did I think? Well, the themes were interesting in this one. It seems like every episode has like a different condensed theme, and in this particular case it was betrayal and trust. Uh, you felt that a lot with um, Sume and Tobue, how, you know, he finally realized that he's never going to fit in with humans because it's just of his nature and because of his abilities, and he's always kind of going to be a bit of an outlier, and him learning to trust the rest of the group and leave the place that he's been comfortable in and go out on this adventure, which is an interesting big step. Um, so. We'll see how that plays out with those three. And then Toboe with Lyra, how he did reveal himself to her and how she ended up in the end rejecting him because of her fear of him, just because she didn't understand him. And I feel like that can play into so many themes of like gender identity and relationships. I mean, trust is, is so hard to gain and it's sometimes really scary to try to trust another person personal experience, I can tell you that much, but um, <laughs> it's always fascinating to see how some of these older anime tackle like this sort of theme, so that uh, kind of all happened sort of in succession, and so it's sort of the, the inciting moment that like pushed all of the characters out into the world, so now we can finally really get the journey going, and the whole group now is together, so we'll see what plays out. I know I say this like every episode, but I just gush over the cinematography um, and over the lighting and the sound because they are doing such a great job of like making dynamic poses with the limited budget that they have and really creating like interesting stage pictures I like to call them of the way they arrange people and objects and scenes and such. Um, the golden hour lighting again harkens back to a lot of noir film and sometimes um, you know that sort of lighting can create a very specific mood. Uh, so I really like that. I like a lot of the shading that they're doing on some of the characters. They, they go a little bit of the extra mile because sometimes some anime you watch can be very flat in terms of like color and shading. But in this, it's um, they're trying to add at least a little bit more depth and a little bit more motion. I like that everything has like sort of a rough edge to it. Everything's a little worn and faded. You can see a little bit of like on the stone walls or sometimes on like Sumi's jacket, things like that. Just little, little tiny details that sort of elevate it in a way. Um, the music is, is great because you kind of really, in a, like I think I said before in an anime like this, you need the music to sort of set the scene and really drive the emotion home. And the music coupled with the voice acting and the visuals is really like selling the characters because a story like this, it's definitely taking itself very seriously. And so sometimes audiences have a hard time buying something with this much lore and this much seriousness but they're marrying all those elements in such a beautiful way that it is selling the whole the whole prog process a whole piece it's it's beautiful really it's a beautiful thing to watch and that's kind of why i keep enjoying watching going in because i keep seeing new elements that pop up and new things to appreciate they were introducing a lot of new elements into this episode um, most interestingly, the Book of the Moon. So it seems like they were saying that people were descended from wolves or there's like a race of people that are descended from there. So I'm sure that that's going to have a lot to play in in terms of the future. So um, that's going to have to be something we find out more about in future episodes. But it is nice that they keep dropping like little lore nuggets like that around. Or like there was a moment where, and I forget his name, I'm terrible. Yeah. Um, the detective character, how he dropped a line about how the nobles are the only ones allowed to fly in the sky. And the officer next to him chided him for it. And I thought that was great because instead of saying like, here's the lore and we're going to explain it in like a big like, you know, monologue. No, they're dropping it in naturally in a way. So it's not so much in your face, it's more subtle and it's more natural. Natural. 
again, it's very enjoyable. The characters are fascinating to watch, and I love the themes. They're playing with a lot of heavy stuff in this show, but that's to be expected when it's something that's this um, urban dark fantasy. You know, you, you, you either dive balls in or you don't. You know, you gotta go for it. So we'll see what happens next in episode four. Allie over and out.